Good evening, relishers. Welcome to the Relishing Dead podcast, where we devour everything in the TWD universe. I'm Dawn. I'm Barb. Aliza. I'm Carol. And we have a special guest tonight, Jason Cohn. I think a lot of people in the TWD family knows him. Welcome to the show. Ma'am, thank you. Hey, Jason. Hello. Yes. So we want to ask you about your story, how TWD changed your life. Okay. You want to give us a little bit of a background? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. I have a, a, a little background I want to give you on uh, The Walking Dead. And then a little background on the spinoff show, Fear of the Walking Dead. The original show, I didn't get into it from the beginning because I didn't really know about it. I was um, I was hanging out with some friends that was from the college here uh, in my town. And this guy was like, man, you need to check this show out. They film it in my hometown where I'm from, and he's from Griffin. He's, oh. like, he, he's like, you need to check it out called The Walking Dead. So I started watching it, and I immediately got hooked. I mean, it was just like, I was, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. could relate, I, I could relate to some of it because I'm, I'm an outdoors person mm -hmm. and it's set in Georgia and I, I live in Georgia. I live about three hours from where they film it. Mm -hmm. But, um, I really wanted to go a little further with it. So me and my wife, we started doing trips to Sonoy and visiting filming locations. And the first location I ever saw was the way would you wall in Grantville? <laughs> yeah. And when I pulled up and saw that yeah. wall, I mean, it, it hit me that this is that's not real. It's, this is real yeah. places you can go and see and be connected to the show. For sure. Yeah. And um, it just, I've been in four or five times since and seen the wall, but um, it's, it's really special to me. And I really enjoy the show. I collect the comics now. I've got some of them up here behind me graded. Mm -hmm. I collect a lot of the autographs. Um, one cool story I have with The Walking Dead is uh, last year at Fandemic was our first ever con that we had been to. We didn't know they had cons. <laughs> so um, I remember being in a Walking Dead group on Facebook, and y'all probably remember the picture. But it was when they was filming the fight scene for the last episode, and somebody leaked the spoiler picture. Yep. Uh -huh. and that's Tony's picture. I'm, for, I'm good friends with Tony. Yep. Um, I remember seeing that picture, and then me and my wife and daughter went to Fandemic. We went Friday and Saturday, and we didn't know anybody, so it was just us hanging out by ourselves. And I was in the VIP line Sunday morning waiting to get in, and somebody sat down next to me, and I just looked over, and I said, damn, he looks familiar. And I looked again, and it was Tony. Huh? I said, aren't you the guy that just posted that spoiler picture into Walking Dead spoilers? He's like, yeah, that's me. So we kind of kicked it off, and we're, we're good friends to this day. I mean, I, we've gone on walking dead trips together with him. That's, that's fantastic. And um, yeah. it's, it was just, that was really one of my first walking dead friends, because where I'm at, um, I'll say, hey, have you seen Walking Dead? And some of them say, yeah. And some people's never even seen it where I live at. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I can't believe they ain't watched it. But some of them say, I'll watch it for a season or two. And everybody tells me they quit watching it when Negan got on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no one yeah. will ever understand the addiction. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, all, we all need a 12 step program, I think. <laughs> so, how did you go from being um, a fan of the show to being in the show and were you in the walking dead or were you in fear of the walking dead or both uh i'm only in fear okay um, prior to fear i had never done any background or extra action at all in my life i've never really had an interest in it and i'll tell you how i got started in that is um in 2021 i started going through some stuff with work and personal life and i started battling depression and dep the depression turned into an alcohol addiction. Mm. And then I got to where I was at my heaviest, I was 320 pounds. Wow. And I, and I told myself, I've got to make some changes in my life. My A1C level jumped sky high. And I was, I was just, I was drinking too much, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I was scrolling Facebook. And this was early last year. I had heard that they was moving fear from Texas to Savannah. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, Georgia does a lot of filming, uh, tax breaks on filming. So we're getting a lot of filming. I live very close to Savannah. 
And I was like, man, that, man, that's going to be awesome. Because to be honest with you, I wasn't a fan of fear to start with. Me mm-hmm, and my wife, mm-hmm. It got to where we wouldn't even watch it. Mm-hmm. And we forced ourselves to watch it. And then it got better and got better and got better. Right. So I was like, if nothing else, I want to go see some filming. Mm-hmm. So I was scrolling on Facebook one day and the local news company posted that a casting agency in Savannah was casting for extras for Fear the Walking Dead. I was like, what the heck, I'm going to try for it. So I submitted to be a walker. And the way you submitted here is you had to do a 30 second home video doing your best walker impression. Okay. You, You had to send it to them and they picked whoever they wanted from that. And like I said, I was still larger at the time but i but i from watching the show i mean i my walk was great i, I could walk just like a walk i was just larger i was gonna say do you have that video oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me, right let me tell you what i did there's a where i live at there's like an abandoned barn back behind where i live and i actually went back there because it looked apocalyptic and there's like cans and wood and doors creaking I had it looking good. It was just a awesome <laughs> fella. And I didn't and I didn't get picked. Do you, the mm. um, I was gonna say, do you have that? Oh, video? let me cut this down. No. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to see the comments. Um I went through that about three times and after about the first or second time, they started putting that they wanted in capital letters, tall and thin. And later on I found out because it's set twelve years into the apocalypse. So, right. so at that point, everything's done deteriorated, unless you're a fresh turn. So I yeah, told that's you. what I would have to be as a fresh turn. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm right there with you, honey. Well, it, it made me kind of mad because the first walker in Dead City is a large walker, but he had the blood packs and all in him. The one that. Made oh yeah, him. yeah, yeah. But see, there's a bigger walker, but it's, that was a. Look, I well, like been, in The Walking Dead, they had the the well walker was pretty chunky. I was just gonna say I could have been a double for the well walker. Yeah. <laughs> that, that rocked on a little bit, and I finally told myself, I said, Jason, you got to make some changes. I looked at myself in the mirror one day, and I said, you got to lose some weight, if nothing else, to get healthier. Right. So from August is when they started doing calls to November, I lost fifty pounds. Wow. And uh, there was a role that come up. I can't mention the name of the role because it hasn't aired yet. And uh, it's not a walker. It's a featured background role. And it deals with some stuff that I actually do in real life. So I was like, hey, hey man, I'm this is all me. So I put in for it. And I told some buddies of mine, and they were sitting there laughing at me. And said, man, you ain't going to get on there. You ain't never done nothing like that. So I just, I forgot about it. And I was sitting at work one day and my phone dinged and I had a text message from a number I didn't recognize. And it said, congratulations, you have been selected for Fear the Walking Dead. You've been picked for the director selected role. Wow. And it went into details that they would send me stuff later to uh, set up for fitting in a COVID test. And I, I didn't really think it was real, so I just replied, confirm. That's all I said was confirm. Well, a day two later, I got another text. Said, hey, Jason, I'm just reminding you, you need to schedule your COVID test. And that told me then that it that it was real. Cool. Wow. Yeah, when you get the COVID <laughs> test, you're in, right? <laughs> um, it, it, to me, at that point, it felt real. But when it really hit me is when I went to the... um. Can I get that diet? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you right now, I was drinking beer every day after work. I cut back on the beer. I eliminated all my sodas. I cut down a lot on my um, my carbs, and I was eating a lot, too. I mean, there was times I'd go to a buffet, and I would see just how much I could eat, and I quit that. So, you know, you, you spoke that you, you know, kind of fell into a pretty dark depression, and then it, that tumbled into alcohol. So, mm-hmm. you know, it... It's amazing and inspiring that, you know, we talk about how a show brought us together and brought mm-hmm. such strangers from across the world into becoming a family. But you are another story on a whole different level. It really helped change your life 
and probably save your life. I mean, losing it, it, the weight, stopping the drinking, getting your A1C, and, you know, giving you that little story to tell that you were on the show. I mean, none of us are can have that. And so very proud of you and congratulations and stay on that good path. Well, yep. Thank you. And, and since then, I've lost an additional 10 pounds. I'm yeah. down 60 total now. I lost eight inches in my waist. Wow. I, I went down uh, two shirt sizes and I work out five days a week now at the local gym because another thing I was going to get to is fear actually opened up a, a small door for me in the background acting in Savannah. And since then, I've been on four other productions. Wow, uh, wonderful. One of them was a low budget and the trailer come out for it last week. And I'm actually in the background of the trailer in a suit doing a ballroom dance. I've never ballroom danced in my life before. Look at you. <laughs> but, but I did in this movie. Um, another one, I can't really go into a lot of details about it, but I can tell you that a Walking Dead actor is in it. They've already been posted that they're in it. And it's actually going to be in a film festival in Italy at the end of this month. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And, Wonderful. And the scene that I did was at the end of the day, I, I filmed two scenes and at the end of the day, they wanted us to do like an intimate restaurant scene. And I was sitting off at a table off camera and the director come over there and grabbed me and moved me and set me directly behind the main actor. And, um, uh, it's already come out that he's in the show, but the main actor was John Bernthal. Oh, cool. Ooh, nicely yeah. done. Shame. And, <laughs> and Do you know I, what I also love about this story you're telling is how The Walking Dead brings out creativity in all of us. Yes. Like, yes, like it brings something else out in us. Like mm -hmm. us doing this podcast, you doing the mm -hmm. acting. Like, it's so amazing how much talent we all have that was hidden, and a show brought that out. It, it, it did, and um, growing up in high school, I was one of those that I was terrified of book reports in front of the class. I, I hated to talk to people. I hated to get up in front of an audience. But let me tell you, when I was on Fear, there was cameras and people everywhere. You don't see what's behind that screen when you're watching the TV show. Right, right. And when, and when she moved me and set me down beside him, I mean, I wasn't a huge Shane fan, but I'm a Bernthal fan, and I love him <laughs> in front of her. And I looked at her, and I, we're not supposed to really mess with the directors, but she was she had her hand on my arm, and she said, man, you look good. I want you to sit right here. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I said, thank you so much for this opportunity because I am a huge fan of his. Yeah, yeah. And she just nodded her head to me and smiled, and it was amazing. That's so awesome. did, you, did you get to interact and, and visit with him <clears throat> during or after? We did for just a little bit, but we had, <clears throat> that day we had already put in 15 hours by the time they wrapped this dinner scene mm -hmm. and it, at that point it was already 9 30 here in uh eastern time and i still yeah, yeah. have almost an hour home so but it was it was just amazing so um you're in fear how many episodes are you in with fear i sh should be in two okay um, the five days that i did the first time was one episode because it takes 10 days to film one episode isn't that crazy? Wow. And mm -hmm. I went back for another time. That should be the following episode. So, so should... the and these have not aired yet, correct? No, ma'am, they have not. Okay. You I were can't... sharing with us a little bit ago that you, because um, we had asked if AM if Fear was going to have an estate sale the way Walking Dead did, and you shared with us um, that there was kind of a sell it was kind of different can you tell us how that worked out because you got some pretty cute little things um yeah they did have one and it wasn't like the walking dead sale was advertised it was basically done through a pet rescue to raise money for the pets at the rescue in mm -hmm. savannah mm -hmm. and i really wanted to be i really wanted my costume because i had a costume fitted mm -hmm. and distressed and made just for me and I really wanted that, but I, I caught wind that it got sent back to Sonora to the oh. So, but I'm going to recreate it for cosplay in the future. But um, 
when I went to the sale, I got to talking to the lady, and she was a set direct. She was a set decorator for the show, and one of the main pieces that I was able to acquire. I love this piece. Yes. Was Baby Moe's <laughs> toy rocking horse from the show. Fantastic. Fantastic. The details is the yes. details is amazing. And it's got Mo on the other side in a different style font. I love that. I absolutely love that. And then the seat has something on it too, doesn't it? It's got like yep. a little parasail. Yep. That's oh, pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> split down the middle here and they actually repair uh screwed it back together and used tape to cover up the crack on it <laughs> but supposedly this piece there's a lot going on in the first episode but this piece is supposed to be in the sinking boathouse in episode one in the swamp okay now i'm gonna have to go back and and rewatch <laughs> and we'll rewatch that episode yeah because yeah i remember that them going in there uh -huh. So I'll have to go back and rewatch that. That's fantastic. I also have a water canteen from Padre that they use. Cool. Padre. Um, this nice. was given to me by a person uh, in the art department. This was a gift. Uh, one of the shows I worked on after Fear, this person was in the show too, and we got to talking, and I was telling him I was a huge fan of the show. So he came up and gave me this Padre water canteen. Oh, that's fantastic. I actually used a picture of this, I believe, in one of y'all's. Uh, I remember. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, another cool piece that I have is in the King County episode, Morgan yeah. goes to his house, and the house catches on fire and burns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a piece of the fence. Oh, oh, oh the picket oh, fence. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, this, oh. this is a piece of the white picket fence in front of the house. That's, That's fantastic. great. And th this is char from where they burned it. And on this side is the fake dirt that they applied to it to make it look weathered. So did they Maybe really they burn that? Set. Did they really burn that, that set fence or did was it, I guess so obviously, or it wasn't all CG. Some of it had to have been real, right? It, it was really burnt. Cause when I went by this day, um, there was, there was ashes and wood and all that there. Huh. I didn't know at the at the time when I visited the set after filming that they'd buried two people there in the show. I didn't really see that part. I think they just went ahead and leveled the dirt. Mm. But but the burnt remains was still there and there was a couple of pieces of fence laying there. And this was just kind of laying in the sidewalk. So you need to get Lenny to sign that. That's what that's what I was hoping for. I was yeah. hoping Lenny was gonna be at Dragon Con this year because he went last year. Mm -hmm. Right. I was gonna get him to sign this, and he's he's. But one day I'm gonna catch Lenny and get mm -hmm. this. Done. So have you? So you said uh, Fandemic was your first convention. Have you been to other conventions since then? Uh, yes, ma'am. We went to the Atlanta Comic Con, which I believe I saw Miss Dawn at. And yes, <laughs> earlier this year. Um, I went to the camp for the first time this year ever. Good. I had That's a great. Blast, had a blast there. I saw her there also. And I believe I bet met Miss Barb when we had lunch. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, really, I was there. I really enjoyed it because it wasn't as like crazy as Atlanta is. It was like mm -hmm. a more intimate setting where you can really mm -hmm. meet and talk to people. Yeah, that's what we like about the camp yeah. too. So it's more of a family gathering than anything. Yeah. Then you have then you have the private events with the with the actors, which you can't get at any convention. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're gonna try to do some of that this next time because I, I this was my first time so i just gotten you know, the weekend pass but um me and my wife is gonna go to the calicon in the middle of september because kaylee fleming and cassidy mcclancy is gonna be there and i've never mm -hmm. met kaylee fleming yeah yeah she's the sweet She's awesome yeah so and i've got a i've got a poster back here that's signed by several people i'm gonna get her to sign it and i have her first issue of the comic signed by Charlie Adlard, one of the artists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get her to sign it, too. So, yeah. Jason, what does your wife think about all these changes in you with watching the show? Um, There's been a little bit of ups and downs with that because, I, like I said, I, I really had to completely change myself. Does she like the show, too? Does she watch it with oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that makes oh, yeah. it better. That, that makes, makes it better. better. <laughs> she, she's actually the one that got me back into watching it because she said, "You get further, get through the first two or three seasons, mm -hmm. and let let's give it a try." So we did. Um, I will tell you a little a funny story. Like I said, I can't mention who's in it, but since this was a smaller group of people that I was with. The night before my first day, they sent me my call times that I had to be there. Well, and they had a map of where to go, and at the bottom, they actually had a call sheet attached. And I've never heard of them doing that with background. And I looked at that, and I saw the call sheet, and I was like, I, looked, I, said, I said, Sabrina, look at this. And I, I was like, look. And she was like, huh? Like, so, I mean, it's I so, did you keep that call sheet and frame it? I have them to where I can. I'm, 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 I have them digitally right now because I don't want any chance of anybody seeing them because I could get in trouble. Right, right. Eventually, I will after my episode airs. Well, true, true, true. Yeah, I, I see J Bone on there. Hey, J Bone. Hey, J Bone. <laughs> hey, Jason. Well, it's just fantastic your story to have us. Now, you have said that. Uh, Rick is your favorite character on The Walking Dead, and one of your favorite episodes is <laughs> watch watch Bar <laughs> Dawn over there. With, um, what is it? Um, four four walls and a roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the red handle machete. Yep. So, so what why is, is that? Yeah. 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 What? Here you go. Well, why is that? <laughs> well, one of the reasons I really like that episode so much is that. To me, that time frame of Rick is the best in the show. I agree. Mm -hmm. Season it, five, Rick is the best. Th season five is always going to be I my favorite season. show. I love the first two seasons, but season five is, to me, if I was going to be in the like a person in the apocalypse like this, I would want to be season five, Rick. And the the group had went through so much with determinist people, and they was is Rick just. I don't know. And two, he told him that there was a red handle machete in that bag, and that's what I'm going to use to kill you. And I, <laughs> following, through, following through with that promise to me made it that much better. And I've always said this. This is an unpopular opinion. He told Negan at least twice. I still want him to follow through with that promise. Yeah. Even, even though he did <clears throat> at the tree and they saved him. I still, I don't know. I like Negan, but I'm, I'm a huge Rick. But fan. his mercy prevailed over no, his wrath. Right. <laughs> it, it, well, it. but, you know, we're all hoping that at some point we'll, you know, have one more series, even if it's only 12 episodes, where they bring everybody back together. You know, they they all get back together. And, and maybe that will be it as, you know, the, the final episode of the final series of the final show is, you know, Rick pulls the gun and shoots Negan. <laughs> you know? like, He'll be like, I told you, I made you a promise. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told Gary. He said, and besides, I made you a promise. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, I have a couple of pictures. Like here is, here is Rick confronting mm -hmm. Gareth in the church. That. I know. <clears throat> Another reason I like this so much is I've, I've been to this location and it, it meant something to me pulling up and seeing where they come down through the graveyard going to the church hearing right. the people looking for sophia and watching them walk up the steps and i've been on the steps and took pictures and i really like that location and it's, it's, it's a special one to me wow yeah. i got this picture just for you jason <laughs> there, <laughs> you there we go yeah. You got can the see, jacket on. Yep, on the top left, he's talking to Gareth, and on the bottom left, you can see the handle of the red machete. And then there's the kill swing. And yep. another reason I like this so much is this guy did some horrible stuff to those people, and then he started begging. And uh -huh. Rick reminded him and said, you, you said you'd do this to anyone. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So why should I let you go when you've already said you would do it to anybody and you would do it again? Uh-huh. And he took care of the problem to me. I, I really yeah, like it. It's, it's that's a great. True. That's true. So we're hoping that you will help us tonight as we can dig back to an older episode. Uh, I know that season two is by far Dawn's favorite, or season three, two, two. Season two is her favorite season. Yeah. Anything with the farm. 
anything with the farm. Yes. And this was oh, very, and this was a pivotal pivotal series uh, season for Rick and Shane. And uh, just kind of hoping you will help us dig into this and and see what your thoughts are on this one. Um, yeah, I really like I really like this season, even though it's simple and it's tied to one location pretty much. It being an outdoors person, it goes along with a lot of stuff you would do in this situation. True. You would go out and scavenge some, but you wouldn't venture too far because you don't know unknown threats in there, especially in this area that they're not really familiar with. But I, I love camping. I love outdoor stuff with cooking. To I really like what they did in this season. And even though it was lower budget, they got the, the message across mm -hmm. to, to very well in this season. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So do we want to dig in? Let's yeah. do it. Let's dig in. Let's devour. All right. <laughs> Relish, if you will. Relish. <laughs> All right. So here we have um, the opening scene was a picture. It was a, a shot of the barn. And mm -hmm. then we see the family just kind of cooking out outside the, the house, the farmhouse. <clears throat> and there's Carol doing her the thing that she does best at this point. Still taking care of others. Yeah. <laughs> so... This is kind of what it leads up to. This is where uh, Glenn has to decide if he is going to tell the group whether or not there are walkers in the barn. This is Maggie. Yeah. yeah. And you can't see her because of the slide, but she's actually up there on that porch and she is just shaking her head. No, no, no. <laughs> and then he turns and looks and Dale is nodding his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poor Glenn. <laughs> yeah, he's torn. He is so torn. He just doesn't know. And I really like Dale's character. I wish Dale would have lasted longer in the show, but they had yeah. to do it. But yeah, I, I really like Dale's character. Mm -hmm. And here we have Glenn. He is telling the group that there are walkers in the barn. Um, Poor Glenn. Yeah. So I got these re reaction shots. Mm. And Norman's kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> exactly. He's like, what the fuck? Me? What did you say? Right? <laughs> T-Dog's like, I ain't listening. Yeah, he's like, I'm fighting. That looks like some real reactions to hearing that in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, Shane perpetually looking like you smell something bad. And Rick and that beautiful brooding that he yes. does. Hot Rick 2, season 2. <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you know, the, sister, know. the sister wives are showing up and showing out. Hello. <laughs> so they have a conversation and they're talking about why they can't leave. And Carol says that we can't leave because uh, we can't leave Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, Shane is his typical, I mean, he's not wrong. We've already discussed this. He's not right. wrong. His just, a, his delivery and his approach mm -hmm. is a little sketchy. So here he's trying to tell the group, you know, you got the first 48 hours and after that you're looking for a corpse. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the shot on the left because it shows inside the barn. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, Don or Barb or any of you have, did you guys like, when you watched this scene, did you inspect it to see if you could so see Sophia walking by? Yeah, I, she was I, never I, in there. Yeah. I did. I was like, I was like looking at the screen going, did they ever going to show Sophia like, you know, walking Just back? the one that, just the mother that grabbed Beth. She was like one of the first ones near the door. But other than that, yeah. no. Even when Glenn was up top waiting for Maggie. Yeah. And then, of course, the other shot is from the other angle, from the inside the barn, looking out. Yeah. And this is all of them <clears throat> discussing. And I think Dale is telling the group that Herschel thinks that they're people. Yep. Yeah, that his own wife and stepson are in there. Right. And, and, and course, like, like Laurie Holden, 
I love Andrea's posture over there. She's like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Shane is in the Shane's in the background, like these motherfuckers. Right, right. <laughs> Laurie's like, really, really, you're gonna listen to this. And of course, that's the barn door. And I like this. I, I took this because I mean Shane really checked everything mm -hmm. on that door. The security, yeah. You know, he wanted to make sure that that sucker was secure. And yes, Marianne, Shane was right. Yeah, he was. It was just his delivery. This was well, this was so important. This was so important. I mean, you know, him, you know, doing it for love and being that compass of moral consciousness of saying, you know, I had to tell them what was going on and I didn't want you to ever be in danger again. And it was like, oh, it was so sweet. Well, this this is when Maggie's pissed off at him still. And I love this interaction because this is when I still liked Maggie. Yeah. Sorry, Don. Sorry, Don. Sorry, Don. <laughs> oh, this, oh, that's right. This is when she puts the egg on him. You're right. I, I still I it. still liked Maggie at the, at this at, at this season. So Mar him. Maria says Shane was a d bag. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> He's great in person, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, and so this is Carl, and he's talking to his mom about finding Sophia and how great of a place this is. And I just, I love Chandler Riggs. I, I just yeah. think that he is just—he's so phenomenal as a, as that at this age of an actor, he was just so great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rude much? <laughs> Rude much? This is when Daryl's walking away from Carol and, her, and calling her a dumb bitch. Destiny's boo is bad. Yes. But he does apologize. Yeah, he does. Later. <laughs> later. Yeah, later. Much later. Oh, my boo. Yes, Destiny. That's your boo. When he, when he can't handle emotions, he lashes out. He does the. Yeah. The. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I found a doll. I found a doll. I used, I used to, <laughs> you found a doll. I used to swing my arm as a kid like that when my mom would get on to me. Like, yeah. It's a Georgia thing. It's a Georgia thing. It's a Georgia thing. <laughs> it must be. Yeah. yeah, he did not. You're right, Maria. So this, I never understood this interaction with Andrea and Dale. I just, I didn't get it. Do you think it's from the comic where I, it has to be? I yeah. think it has to be. And I, I'd have to look back and, and see, you know, in the comics. Um, but then uh, this is when Dale also decides that he's going to come up with a plan to take the guns away. Uh -huh. And I love this shot. So I love the biblical aspect the religious aspect of Herschel I love that he's a godly man and I love that shot where he's sitting there just eating dinner and, and reading the Bible but the reason that I got the other pictures is because it, at this point Rick looks at Herschel and he calls the people in the barn people right for Herschel for mm -hmm. Herschel mm -hmm. and Herschel immediately looks up at him with a connection of respect Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because he understands that Rick understands him. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's huge. I, I, I think that that, although Herschel respected him before this, I think that this was huge because it made a connection between the two of them. And Carol, that's a good point, because later on in the episode, after he talks to Maggie, he goes to Rick. So. Yeah. That's a good call out to reason why he comes to Rick and says, Hey, come help me do something, you know? Yeah. Right. I don't think, and of course it's all in the script. We all understand that, but if we're going to dissect a scene, we're going to dissect it. I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't think he would have done that had Rick not called the people in the barn people. Right. Mm -hmm. no. No, no, he, he gained his respect at this point right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or somewhat gained it. He, he got on his good side at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can yeah. hear the way he says the word people, like it's gritting through his teeth, like he doesn't really want to say it, but he's saying it mm -hmm. for respect. Right. 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 And I, I love that interaction. Of course, I love Scott Wilson, and I just think he was fantastic, man. Fantastic. Yeah. Fabulous. 
So here we have the conversation between Rick and Shane, where Rick tells Shane that Lori is pregnant with baby Judith. Yeah. 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 The pro demeanor changes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that bottom right picture it shows it. It's yeah, that's his reaction to when Rick says that Lori is pregnant. And this this episode was really the the breakdown of Shane's character. This was yeah. this was where it collapses. I mean, we thought it was breaking at Tell It to the Frogs, but this was the total collapse. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of scenes in here that he, like you said, Aliza, he's breaking. There's a lot of scenes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the we interaction thought that he between broke. the interaction between him and Dale by the car was a big one too. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So <clears throat> the one thing that I noticed about this episode and season two altogether is that there's a lot of far away shots, so that you can take in the whole atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, no, and I was going to say that's just so we can figure out what items we have or don't have in that room. <laughs> <Right. laughs> There's also another one, Barb. I'm looking for those vases that I have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find out where those props were. I'm still looking for my damn sherry glasses somewhere. <laughs> I wanted the china that was used in this uh, house, the desert rose. Well, my you, you there. So I actually have that set from my mom and my grandmother. And there are some pieces online, Jason, that are for sale. Yeah. And I'm I'm really tempting myself to buy at least one of the pieces. Like they're like stupid priced, you know. But uh, and that's so funny. My grandmother had that same set. Yep. So every time I saw that set in the china cabinet in the background, I would think of her because my grandma had that same exact set. Yeah. I yep. have it too, Jason. Yep. I'll send you the link on where we can get a piece. Okay. Yeah, a buddy of mine owns an antique store, and he has a set of it sitting in there. And every time I walk by, it, it, I think of this right here because I remember seeing it in Herschel's farmhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to get a shot of the refrigerator because I love the fact that there are all the family photos on the fridge. Yeah. I just think that's just the sweetest thing. Have we and noticed if any of the pictures on the fridge are any of the pictures that were in her little box that she had on Dead City? I don't know. I didn't recognize any, but I didn't either. Okay. That still frustrates me that she has pictures. Like, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Where did they come from? How did Ross get out of the basement? <laughs> uh, I helped him. I helped him. I helped him. I helped him. Yeah. And, and I this, love yeah, a perfect interaction between her and her dad. And yeah. And calling him out on you, you <clears> can't <throat> just preach, you have to practice what you preach. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, I love that whole interaction between the two of them. And, it looks she, like calls, them. and she calls them walkers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, it does. So in this shot, this Herschel has our, or Herschel, yeah, Herschel has come and he's gotten Rick and they are going to go to the swamps. And again, this was another one of those far away shots. And I loved it because I, I did it because I know Barb loves this whole season and she loves that whole setting and everything. And so um, this is the whole farm shot for the, the road to the house. Well, it's just it's one of those things. And even I think with those distant shots inside the house is it gives a sense of normalcy. And you're, you're yeah. don't, you don't when you see something like this. It, it makes you forget what's actually going on in the world around. And I think that goes to what Glenn was saying to her, you know, is there's, I had forgotten by right. being here, the yeah. dangers that are outside. Because when you see those faraway shots of Maggie standing in the kitchen and then this beautiful, surreal scene, you forget what is just beyond the tree line. Yes, right. it makes the writing is so good. You're more worried about the threat of Shane than you are the threat of walkers. Right, right. I mean, you yes. you forget what's just beyond the tree line, and I think they did that so well with this location, like you said, the writing and the cinematography angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Destiny, I agree with you. I wish we could see Herschel's farm. Unfortunately, it's a private. Well, maybe if I buy a bunch of Bibles and go up and say I'm a Bible salesman, they'll let me in. 
<laughs> that would be funny. I have seen it in an aerial shot, but not in person. Yeah, yeah. So here we have the interaction where Carl tells Shane um, that what he said about Sophia is bullshit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is where Shane breaks. I yeah, think this is yes, a breaking this is point. It. This is it, absolutely. And then Shane and Lori talking about how many times has Rick saved you, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, that night, that night at the at the quarry, whatever. And he was like, nope, that was me. And again, the, the, the long shots, you're seeing the farmhouse in the background. And then the last photo there on the bottom right, Lori sees some interaction going on with Shane and Carl. And two seconds later, she's calling for Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And this she's is where like, she <laughs> also says, this will never be, this is Rick's child. Right. right. Regardless. Yeah. Yes. I loved how he said, you know, that he, he's not made for this type of world. Right. When <clears throat> obviously we see he's one of the last men standing, you know. Right. Yep. So then this is Shane digging around for the guns in Dale's RV. Trying to figure out what Slippery Dale has done with them. He does not need to have a shaved head. I'm just saying he's got like a little alien head shape going on. (laughs) Marianne said they could make so much money one weekend. Let us come to the farm. (laughs) I agree. We can sleep in the barn. Yes. He has longer hair when I'm around him. (laughs) <laughs> so here's Herschel has Rick and is that Jimmy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they are getting uh Lou and the unknown dude that works at the place with her out of the swamp. Oh my god, it's just lead them. Lead them. Yeah. You're the carrot. You're the carrot. <laughs> I'm not gonna get my butt eaten. And if you guys know about the bad lip sync, this is one of those that was part of the bad lip sync too. <laughs> so I love this interaction with Daryl and Carol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With the Cherokee Rose. And it's just it's just a fantastic interaction between the two of them. Aww. I know, huh? You know, and it's and it's it's only appropriate that they would bond. You know, he came yeah. from such an abusive life and she came from an abusive life. Oh. And, you know, it is, it's, you know, it's, it's pivotal. This, I think this season was very pivotal for their connection and their bonding. Yeah. No, so, yeah, that, yeah. Here we go. Here's Walker bait. Oh, so sweet. And those longer shots to show the farmhouse and the road and try to much as they can in there. Yeah. This was again still when I liked Maggie. Stop. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah. And this this is the scene where he tells her that I would yes. rather have you pissed off and alive than like me and dead, which yeah. you know, just adorable. I really love their relationship in those early years. Yeah. That's one of my favorite scenes right there. <laughs> the little Shane walk. <laughs> Shane walks up and puts the gun right to his chest. Yeah. It's a sick yeah. boy right there. Uh, twisted. Mm-hmm. And Dale thinking that he's all sly, slippery. Yeah. It's okay, so, so go ahead. Here's, here's when we get start getting a little beefy. Yeah, buddy. Mm. We've got Rick and... Herschel and Jimmy coming out of the woods with the walkers. <laughs> Daryl's like, what the hell? Yeah. Daryl sees, Daryl sees Shane with the guns. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and Rick comes and, and everybody's running towards him. And he's Great like, shot. oh shit. Oh shit. Shot. Look at that. Look at that that schmexy man right there, Don. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Barb, your schmexy man hadn't shown up yet. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that, and it's funny because one of my favorite episodes doesn't even have him in it. Both of my favorite episodes does not have him in it, which is funny, but okay. Move oh, on. Don't tell him that. <laughs> uh, Maria, right. Maria says it's like watching a boiling pot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
I know. All right, so <clears throat> Shane starts plummeting Lou with bullets. Poor, poor Herschel. Uh, mm. and yeah. The the look on his face of realization that yeah, these things are actually dead. Mm -hmm. Fantastic mm -hmm. acting right there. Yeah, that, that's ah. I just I just yeah. love that. Wow. So Shane takes matters into his own hands as Shane does yeah. and he starts breaking down the barn we have to fight for it we have to fight for survival right here brother, right don't now. do this <laughs> oh, brother brother Herschel take us take this Herschel <laughs> all right take it <laughs> Herschel oh my gosh and I'm sorry but I have uh, this is one of my absolute favorite walkers I love this guy <laughs> He's so excited. I know. I had to I had to take all four shots of this guy because he is so happy to be a hero walker, to be the first guy out of the barn. And they let him smile. They just kept it. <laughs> and I just love that. I don't know who this guy is, but one of these days I want to meet this guy. He's not the only guy that gets to wear overalls either. <laughs> right. Oh, okay, oh, Jason. There we go. There we, go. we appreciate the little. little now we know, what to, now we know what to look for. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna look for Jason. Hey, Jason, do you have your beard in fear? Uh, yes, ma'am, I do. And it's actually thicker than this because I wasn't allowed to shave it or trim it. No fresh lines. Okay. Right. All right. Good to know. You heard you heard it first here, people. <laughs> All right, so here is the everybody reacting to the walkers coming out of the barn. They're going ahead and taking care of business. But Glenn had to get permission from Maggie first. Glenn had yeah, to get right? permission from Maggie, absolutely, and I loved that. Mother, may I? Yeah. <laughs> and and it's just it's just crazy. And I love Andrea in this scene. And I'm not a big Andrea fan. No but way. I love her. In, I, I know, but I'm telling you right now, Don. The reason that I love her in this scene is because you can see her. Everybody else is so emotional, and she just goes up, and it's almost like you can physically see her just calm herself and, and take care of business. Care of business. Yeah. Well, I see. You know how I looked at it? I looked at it differently. I looked at her like she did calm, but I could see her thinking back to Amy. Mm -mm. Right. That's what I took it as. Is like she was thinking of Amy at that moment. That's and, I can, and I can see that. Yeah. I can That's see good. that. And I, I do. I love Andrea in this this episode. I, I think that this particular scene right here was probably my favorite Andrea scene. She she so really should have hooked up with Rick. Yes, I told her. Yes, that too. and she said Absolutely. she agreed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's Mama. There's mom. mom. Yeah, that's that's Beth's mom, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's kind of a yeah. Mm. And that's Daryl taking her down. She looks like she's been rode hard and put up wet. Oh Lordy, she looks like she's surprised. <laughs> like, oh my, hello. Hello. <laughs> I do I do have a question about the gunfire in this because as I rewatched it, and I remember thinking this once before, is like everybody's a good shot. Yeah. Shane, Daryl, they all, but a lot of times they're hitting different parts of their bodies and they're yeah, not hitting the heads and they're close. So it's like they're all bad shots. <laughs> they're, they're all stormtroopers. stormtroopers. <laughs> what? Thanks, thanks. Well, I've actually in my in my training, in my gun training, it's actually harder to hit a target up close than it is at a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which is kind of it's weird, but yeah. Oh, that look. Look at that that's, look. That's, that's, that look. That's, that's, that look. that's that Shane look where he looks like he smells something bad. Mm. But you know, I mean, and I don't know, I, I didn't figure this out. I did not figure what was going to happen. I didn't either. I was shocked. Yeah, I knew something was going to happen, and I was waiting for it because that door was really, really dark. Yeah. But I didn't know what was going to happen. And this was I, probably, this was, you know, watching the, the thing that you sent me, Don, from that day, 
-hmm. and it was a very emotional moment for everyone on set when when this happened and you know she she may not be the kindest human as an adult but she she was a magnificent young actress doing this role and it was a very emotional for them and so it was hugely shocking for us yeah i think yeah. we all thought we're going to find sophia and carl's reaction was really what got me poor mm -hmm. carl he's yeah. like we're not leaving here until we find sophia and i'm gonna have candy for her and i'm you know I want to be the one to find her, you know, so it was really I know, heartbreaking. I know when it got really quiet, like right before you even see her feet is when I realized it. And I said, oh, shit, no. Yeah. And when I first saw it, I just remember saying, oh, shit, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so much. Maria said that this is his uh, fuck around and find out look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Perfect. So there you have it, folks. These the tiny little ankles. Pictures. That it's was just heartbreaking. Oh. The music is just. I know. On point. And Melissa McBride even says, you know, the first thing that really got her was seeing her little ankles and feet mm -hmm. come out of the barn. It was just, you know, so overwhelming. Yeah. And there she is in her little rainbow T-shirt. Yeah. And I like that they could that they showed us her bite. Yes. You know, with that little bite on the on the left shoulder there. I, I like that they showed us that that's what happened to her. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's the reactions. Um, you've got Lori and Carl in the background there on the left picture, and then of course mm -hmm. Carol and Daryl. And she's right in the middle of saying Sophia in that shot. <clears throat> and little did he know in 10 years, he'd be holding her back again. Yeah. And again, and again, and again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, it was fantastic acting, fantastic yeah. acting on all of them. <clears throat> and there's Sophia. She's coming out of the barn. And there's Carl. His, he is the one who put me over the edge. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what was so impactful, too, was not only Carl and, and Carol's breakdown, which would be expected, but was the dead silence of everybody else in the group. Yeah. That was in total shock and disbelief and, and you know, just stunned. Stunned. Right. See, I thought the more impactful was Rick to me because I felt he took all the guilt. He did. I could see it on his face, all the mm -hmm. guilt. And it was just like, I have to take care of this. I created this. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. So then we yeah. have we have Carol and Daryl again, and we have uh, Herschel with the recognition that, that she's been in the barn this whole time. Which, uh, you know, and I may have forgotten, but I don't think he knew she was in the barn. I think no, that, was, that was one that Otis had gotten and put uh -huh. in there. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. had no clue. Yeah. They yeah. asked him and he says that he didn't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He right. knew about his wife and stepson, but. And then here's the blow. And um, the, the thing to point out, and I don't know, I'm sure that, that the girls have seen, have noticed this, but Rick doesn't fire a single shot the entire time. Uh uh, not until this moment. Until this moment. Yeah. Well, Power. most of the time he was back there holding Bubba Bo Bubba on the stick. Herschel, take this, Herschel. And, uh, and nobody would ever take the stick. And so he was holding Bubba. And it wasn't until you know Shane came around and shot him. But no, he never he never fired yeah. until this. I don't and know it, if it was because he was in shock that everybody was doing it or he was just like, you know, I can't be up there. This is Herschel's family. I, I'm the one who was the, yeah. you know, the, the voice of reasoning with Herschel. I can't take down his family right. in front right. of him. Yeah, that's a good point, Barb. Oh, it's just the way it's just the way Rick would think is what I'm thinking. Right. right. I can't I can't be a part of this is not after everything me and Herschel have talked about. No, because right. he needed, told him, yeah. needed Lori to stay there. She was pregnant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, same thing with Dale. I don't think he would have taken part in it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Well, and he didn't. 
Right. Well, he was late to the party. Late, yeah. <laughs> he was late to the party. He was hiding <laughs> guns. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So this is the gratuitous sex shot here because it's Rick and he's looking fine as ever. And he's got a big, big gun. He's got a big gun. He's got a python. Uh -huh. <laughs> big, big, big <laughs> he's got a python. Jason, would you control these women? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm the odd man out here. He's <laughs> my favorite character, but I'm, hey, I'm, I'm good. I to me, that's where Rick became the leader. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Some badass makeup. I know. So, Jason, one of the questions that we had asked in some of our earlier podcasts was, what do you think would have happened to Carol had Sophia survived? I, I don't think she would have become as strong as she did. I think this happening helped change her to become the person she does. Right. That might kind of sound twisted a little bit, but I, I like the character she became. I'm, I'm yeah. Carol. Mm -hmm. Um. I hate to say that I, I like that it happened, but it did help develop Car Carol to become the woman she was, is. Yeah, right. It helped to me. I mean, I hate to say that about a kid passing, but it's, it's in the show. Well, that's, and I think that's kind of been everybody's kind of consensus, at least with our group on the podcast and mo most of the viewers, is it did help catapult her character into a different direction mm -hmm. and into becoming stronger. And I think that's, um, I think that's what gave her the ability to do what she did to Lizzie, uh, you know, and things like that. So, yeah. and I, I, I totally agree that just a little part of me thinks that she would have fought as hard as she has in the, to keep her child alive. Like Rick does. Right. Yeah. yeah. True. True. That it just might have took her a little bit longer to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you have it. That's it. Fantastic episode. That's in my top 10. That episode. Great episode. Mm -hmm. So, so um, um, Aliza, before we go, do you think maybe we want to ask Jason those questions? Yes, we do. Yeah, <laughs> for fun. And before we do go, I got one more cool thing I do want to show y'all. So. Okay, sure. Okay. So, get Jason, you, there's get a your thinking cap on. Yeah, so there was a uh, show on called Inside the Actor Studio with James Lipton, and he always ended his interview sessions with a list of 10 questions. So mm -hmm. we're going to give those to you. Okay. What is your favorite word? Favorite word? Oh, my goodness. Well, there it is. One, oh, my goodness. It's, no, it's one that I say a lot, but I probably can't say it on here. Sure you can. I mean, I'm accused of saying fuck all the time. <laughs> What You're is right your, with us, brother? What is your least least favorite word? Um, well, I actually have a least favorite phrase, and it is what it is. I hate that saying. So I'll, 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 I'll give you that. I hate when people. It is what it is. Well, no shit. You're right. Uh, what turns you on? Oh, uh, excites uh, you besides just making you randy. Um. I don't know. I just like having a good time and doing uh, going places with my wife. And I don't know. I'm just a simple guy. What turns you off? Uh, really excessive bad attitudes. Uh, making fun of people that has stuff that they cannot help. I really hate that. And I okay. witness it. I witness it all the time at my job, and I do not like it. Good answer. What sound or noise do you love? Believe it or not, uh, cannon fire. Cannon fire. Yep, and I, I'll tell you the reason why is because at the Padre location, you can go visit that, and they do a cannon firing twice a day on Saturdays. And when they light that cannon, it, I mean, you can just feel it in your chest. It will rock your body with that big cannon going off. Interesting. I have to go listen for cannon fire girls. What sound or noise do you hate? Really high pitched, screechy voices. 
Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fran Drescher, prime example. Fran Drescher. <laughs> what is your favorite? Well, you've already said your favorite word, but is it also your favorite curse word? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so what profession other than your own would you like to try? Um, I don't know. I would like to have gotten into maybe try to do some form of business management. Um, Cause I actually have a profession that I like to do. I get to break into stuff for a living full time. I'm a locksmith. Oh, okay. I was like, cool. He's a cat burglar. <laughs> I, I'm actually a, a pretty skilled locksmith and, um, and then I do background acting in addition to that. Cool. But I would like to some form of business management cause I like making critical decisions and helping move people in the right directions. And I don't have a lot of that in the role that I am now. That's fantastic. What profession would you not want to do? Not want to do. Oh, there's a bunch of that. <laughs> uh, they, um, one of the guys that paves the asphalt on the highways. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough <laughs> sure. And if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? That I was genuinely tried to be a good honest person the best that i could that's nice. fantastic those are fantastic i yeah. try to be i know that we all fall short i fall short but i i, I, I truly try to be well, well we think you've done an amazing thing with your life you've made a lot of wonderful changes we are excited to look for you in your overhauls in the last see last half of the last season of fear the walking dead and uh, you said you have something else you wanted to show uh, us real quick? Yes, ma'am. And it's actually right here behind me. Let's see. It's a, it's a very high quality original season eight poster. Ooh. And we all became friends on the show and we're all background actors together. So I did another show after Fear that a bunch of the people was on and we came up with the idea of me getting a poster made. And I have people from Swamp Walkers to PAs, production assistants. I have Padre guards. I have people in the parent army. I have some people on there that put roles on there that has not been aired yet. So I can't show a better show, a better shot of the poster. But everybody that was on there, I told them to put their role. And if they had more than one role, put their most favorite role that they did in the show. Oh, well, that's wonderful. You say that's yeah. something you can't show closer? I, some of it I can't because there's some people that had roles on there that has not aired yet and they listed what their role is. Okay, gotcha. But so what's I, fantastic about that is you, it's not the A-list actors. It's the people who make the show who possible, like you said, the crew, the background actors. I think that's that's such a special tribute to, to those guys as well and gals. Uh -huh. I even even have the person on there that ran the crappy tent that had all our snacks for us. Nice. <laughs> they kind of looked at me weird when I got them to start signing this. And I said, let me tell you, I'm a fan of this show. I know some of these people here, this is just a gig to them, but I'm a fan. Uh -huh. And I've met these actors. I've met Jeffrey Dean. I've met, I've, I mean, walkers, especially hero walkers. It's almost yeah. impossible to get them to sign something because most of them don't do conventions. Right. So I just thought, I told them, I said, we all on this set together. We're sitting here and holding, doing nothing. I've got paint pens galore. Y'all go to signing. You know who you sound like, Jason? You sound like Rick Grimes, Andrew Lincoln. That's how he treated everybody on set. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> well, if you come to camp, you will find some, quite a few hero walkers there. Brandon Hardison will be at camp and, uh, they won, and yeah, there's a lot of background actors that set up their rooms, and a lot of the hero actor uh, background actors will be there. I will tell you one cool thing is the the I can't go into too much detail, but the episode, the main episode that I did, the hero in it, is actually from where I live. He lives in the same town with me, and we've become really good friends. And he looks amazing on nice. screen. Nice. I mean, it, it is amazing looking, and I saw him the other day in town, and I was like, yeah, "We just, it's we're all close and good friends. And it's just amazing." That's fantastic. That. Well, thank you so much for being yeah, here with us tonight. It's, it's been fun. a real pleasure getting to know you, and 
We're hoping that we'll see you again at camp this May. Yes, ma'am. We're going for sure. Like to thank our Patreons and financial supporters of our show: Destiny, Terry, and Kay Collier, Sandy Morrison, Lauren Perkins, Ben and Melissa Gilbert, Pamela Blythe, Marianne Craig, and Dustin Baker. Also, a very special thanks to our camp: Mommy and Poppy, Oscar and Casey. Ain't she fine? Yes, <laughs> she's so fine. <laughs> And we appreciate all of you guys for joining us. Yes. And it's getting I, close to the Daryl show. I yep. haven't paid attention to the last few comments, but people telling me, thank you for sharing the stories. I thank y'all for having me. I, I was just hoping that a little bit of it might be encouragement for somebody that if you mm -hmm. think you can't make a change in your life, you can. You, and just that's, have, you just have to put your mind to it and tell yourself that I can do this. Yeah, and we've got a lot of people in our family that that have uh, suffered from a lot of the same things that you have suffered from. And so anytime that we can have somebody on the podcast that can commiserate or empathize with that type of journey, um, that's kind of, you know, where we want to be. Because we, you know, we let the whole thing for the Walking Dead family for this podcast is to build each other up, encourage one another and lift each other's hearts and spirits. Um, yes. So you've, you've definitely done that and hopefully, and I'm sure I don't even have to say hopefully, but I'm sure your words uh, mm -hmm. fell on the ears of someone that needed to hear that message today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate you. Ma'am, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Jason. you guys for watching. <clears throat> we love you guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.